Ahoy hoy! Hello again, it's your local homeless person here to speak to you today about a serious copyright problem. So, I haven't been able to find out a lot about the response to this, but I know for sure that an SCP reactor, well, technically I believe they react to a bunch of things, but they also react to SCP content, named Isaiah X. Cozy, has been uh, copyright struck by a SCP animated channel called Detective Void. Um, what I can see from Detective Void is it looks, and I could be wrong, let's look at the about page. I'm, de okay, fantastic. <laughs> I'm Detective Void, it's not how you think. That's uh, y useful, sure, okay. Um, so what has happened is that, and I'm going to go into why this doesn't really, this isn't cool, but we already know, right? We already understand what a Creative Commons license means, but it's also important because I think a lot of people outside of my community might not know, and I also think it's important to have solidarity with people who are running into similar problems that you may run into at some future point. Um, I'm not speaking to this person's YouTube content in any way. I'm not recommend. I'm not necessarily recommending it because I haven't watched any of, of it beyond the video where they explain their copyright strike, and I don't want to be recommending something I don't have. Uh, I, I don't want to be recommending something that I'm not familiar with. But I do want to shine a light on this issue because it's important <laughs> enough to shine a light on. So. I think most people know that this has happened to me before. I had uh, a copyright strike, but it was retracted within hours of me appealing it. Um, from who was it? That's, that's how that's how in that's how ephemeral it was that I don't even remember who it was. It's uh, it was uh, yep, it was Infographics, but they retracted it immediately. Uh, got in contact with me. We had a com we had a few conversations about it. Um, they apologized. It was a whole thing, right? That happened. Now, what we're dealing with today is similar to that, but on a smaller scale with both creators being smaller. We have Isaiah X Cozy, who only has their, this, I believe their reaction channel. They have an, uh, a main quote unquote main channel. That's only about 20,000 subscribers. And their reaction channel has about 50, well, it's less than 50, but about 50,000 subscribers. And uh, the channel that uh, copyright struck them only has 35, 36,000 subscribers. So these are both smaller channels in general. And this is the kind of thing that can definitely fly under the radar if not picked up by a bigger channel, which is the only reason I'm really covering it. And I really, I went on their Discord, well, I went on a Discord. I'm not, ugh, ugh. I was not, I was not a fan of the interactions I saw going on at the time I arrived. Let's just say that much. But I went on their Discord to check out uh, what was going on and uh, nobody knew anything of, of I, I checked it this morning. I should probably should have checked it a few days ago and then waited for somebody to get back to me, but I didn't do that. Um, so I went on their Discord and looked around, and nobody was able to tell me whether or not the uh, situation had been resolved. What has happened, and we're going to go over the exact details of what has happened is, is a video by Detective Void, which is an animated SCP channel, was reacted to by Isaiah X Cozy, and then, I don't know if it was positive, negative, or whatever, but what I do know is that it, is that it was copyright struck by the animated people. There are two things about this that are important to understand. First of all, I'm never going to fall into the thing where it's like, I mean, all they're doing is making animation based around SCP, so they're not doing anything of creative value, because I feel like that's a very... That's a very negative way to look at quite a lot of work. I love this little piece of hair that's just sticking up out of nowhere. That's a, <laughs> I can't get it to go down. Oh well. But it's a very negative way to look at like a lot of work. And animation is a lot of work. And even if you outsource it to a, uh, a studio, like that's a lot of resources that you're dumping into it. So I somewhat can understand the reaction. I'm not saying I understand, well, it's, it's very, it's complicated, right? 
I understand the impulse. It is still incorrect and wrong to to follow through on that impulse. Because SCP content is Creative Commons content. And if you create an animation based around an SCP, what you're going to do is create content that is not protected under normal copyright laws in the way that you think that it is. At least, let's say, not protect, it is protected. There are protections Creative Commons provides, but they're not the protections that you're used to. So you can't literally just go, this person, even, if, I don't know what the reaction was because the video has been taken down. Even if the guy sits silently entirely through your video, that's just the thing you have to deal with. There's nothing you can do about that. And, and, and I, you know, we can say, look at that channel and say, oh, I, you know, they shouldn't have done that. They should have reacted to it more. They should have done it. And they may have. Again, I don't know because I don't know what the video looks like. I'm not making any judgments on the content that was taken down because I haven't seen it. But what I do know, okay is that, and this is very true of people on the SCP Wiki as well. This is true of me. This is true of everybody. And everyone needs to understand this one truth about SCP content. It's the reason why you're never going to see a big budget movie about SCP or a television series that's that doesn't involve changing the IP in such a way as to basically make it not SCP, right? And it's very simply this, though. Those of us who make a living and or uh, try or, or, and are trying to make a living off of SCP content, what you're doing is you are sacrificing normal copyright protections. You're sacrificing the ability to get people to not steal your work. You are explicitly sacrificing that. And you even if you didn't realize you were, you need to be clear about this. That is what you're doing. And in exchange, you're getting a ready-made fan base that is fairly under-exploited, for lack of a better way to put it, uh, by media. Because media, the reason why media isn't exploiting the fan base, if there was a way to protect stuff like this, if these copyright strikes were actually valid, then media would be grabbing a hold of this and making SCP content because the audience is so big. A professionally made, like, big budget sort of animation studio would grab a hold of SCP content and make SCP stuff with the SCP logo while, you know, openly uh, shown. The reason why this is an unexplored niche and the reason why big budget stuff hasn't basically invaded the, <laughs> what's it, the fandom for lack of a better way to put it. And I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing. I'm just saying it hasn't happened is because it's creative commons because they can't protect their ips so if you as a small creator start treating it like you're a big company and treating it like you have to quote unquote protect your ip but it's not yours you are completely missing the point of scp content and why it works okay and i'm going to give links uh to both channels and i'm not again not recommending the content of either but i'm gonna give links to both channels in the description so you guys can follow through and make sure that you know this has been taken care of one way or the other and if for some reason isaiah x cozy or i'm i think his actual name is isaiah cozy because that's his main channel if isaiah cozy happens to watch this or somebody sends him a link to it um just appeal the strike they, I know you probably don't have access to lawyers and all these other things. You're a little worried about it. And I saw in your video that you were talking to SCP like staff and they'll probably advise you the same thing or advise you. They have no idea what to do. It's possible. They'll probably give you, they probably have an idea of what to do. If they ever get back to you, just appeal the strike. There is, when I was copyright struck by uh, Infographics Show, and it was a mistake on their part, and they it was there was an automated system and all these other things. Um, all I did was appeal it, and immediately, as soon as a person saw it, they were like, "Oh, this is not. I should not have done this. This, or we should not have done this, or the machine uh, algorithm should not have done this. Whatever it was, and it was reversed. And even if it isn't, you will win on appeal. This is Creative Commons content, regardless of what they think." I'm not a lawyer. Let me be clear about that. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not giving you legal advice. I am giving you YouTube advice from lack of a better way to put it. You should, and you're doing this at your own risk, obviously, because of the way the YouTube system works, unfortunately. But under 
most circumstances, appealing it and just saying, I, this is Creative Commons content. This is not under a protected copyright. I can do this. Should be perfectly fine. And more importantly, we'll just take a look at one of their random videos. This one's one of their most popular ones. Oh, yeah, they don't. So it looks to me, yeah, it looks to me like they're keeping this under a standard YouTube copyright. So uh, Detective Void is actually in violation of the creative. The, like, there aren't a lot of limitations for Creative Commons, right? But the uh, Detective Void, it looks very strongly, and I'm not seeing, I'm not scrolling through the timeline of this video, just as an example. And I don't see any text that says anything of the sort. There is like a kind of a conclusion for it. But in the description, and yeah, these are, mm-hmm. Yeah, these are definitely uh, under a violation of the Creative Commons copyright because or Creative Commons uh, protections because they do not state in the yeah they don't state in the description or anywhere in the video that the works are Creative Commons and how they're protected. Their work is a derivative. Like for example, this is SCP four nine seven five, an animated video, right? SCP four nine seven five is under a Creative Commons share-alike attribution license, right? So first of all, there's nothing in here that shows attribution. There's nothing in here that links back to the original work, and the work itself is not being distributed under a Creative Commons license. Those are the three elements that have got to be followed. You have to link back to the original work, you have to say who wrote it, and you... <laughs> If you create a derivative piece of content, it's not enough if I just mention SCP-4975 in a video, for example, or if I like talk a little bit about it. But if I literally just make an adaptation, an animated adaptation of a thing like these people are doing, you have to include those elements. You have to say who made it. You have to link back to the original article and you have to release the new piece under a Creative Commons license. So these people are the ones who are in violation, not the reactor. And actually, let's take a look at Mr. Cody, because he has other SCP reaction stuff. Let's see if he's in violation or not. He might not know. Original vid linked out. He's not linking to... He's linking He's linking it as a fair use thing. Uh, I mean, his stuff is... Do so if you're doing a reaction to an SCP video... Yeah, this is a problem for him, too. So he needs to include, first of all, that video has to be released under a Creative Commons license, and he has to link back to the original SCP-133, for just this one, for example, SCP-1337, and the author of that article. And these are not very hard hurdles to overcome. And again, this is just a matter of people not understanding how the system works. These are the bare minimums, though. This is what you absolutely have to do in order to create SCP content. And the, the the confusion over this problem, and again, I'm looking, even the person who has been copyright struck is also not doing these things. Like the confusion over these problems with the newest SCP content is, uh, is a serious problem. And this is, for someone, I should say, for the SCP channel, it's the SCP animated channel, it's a little bit less reasonable for them to make this mistake. Because it looks like they're throwing a lot of money into animation, right? So anyone who puts this money into animation should have looked into the the SCP license and understood it first. The reactor is just reacting to a video on the internet and thinking, you know, it's fair use. It's actually, what's the best way to put this? <clears throat> first of all, reactions are probably not fair use. It's complicated, but whatever. A lot of companies will allow it, but the particular thing he's reacting to here doesn't need to be fair use. It is protected elsewise by the Creative Commons copyright, or I should say the, yeah, the Creative Commons protections. Just follow the Creative Commons license and you're fine. You don't need to worry about it. Be Is it or isn't it fair use? And we can talk about reactions all day. I've done reactions on this channel. Reactions are probably, I've done reactions. I had a reaction channel a long time ago. Reactions are probably not fair use, but companies often allow them under certain limitations that because they know that excitement about a particular product or a particular thing will often lead to people viewing that original piece of content more often. Um, 
companies are a little smarter than most people give them credit for early on. They didn't realize these things and they'd like, ah, let's take down. They just treated it like it was normal stealing. But over time they've started to develop into the way of understanding how it works. Some companies don't give a crap. Some companies just have a very strict copyright policy where they will take stuff down. Uh, and they are probably within their legal rights to do so, uh, depending on how transformative a reaction is. But again, none of this matters if you're reacting to SCP content, because it is all derivative of SCP Wiki content and under the Creative Commons license, period. Obligatory, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't make... <laughs> Obligatory, I'm not a lawyer and I can't make uh, absolute determinations here, but I can tell you what I know and how I uh, deal with stuff. Anyway, that's it. I just wanted to inform people about this issue. And again, links to both channels will be in the description below. Let me be clear here. Do not go to either of these channels for any reasons and harass people or complain at people. Just make, you know, if you want to talk, and this is just so you can see the people that I'm talking about here. And uh, you can find out whether or not these people have solved their problems one way or the other. Uh, and I think amplifying a voice here is important, but I don't want it to be hostile. I'm, I'm talking to you, Carl. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. And then head on over to patreon.com forward slash D Sumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including Dr. J Redacted and Sinjariki, who have both pledged at $100, and Morgan, who has pledged at $40. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and I will see you all again on Thursday.